signed into law on September 30th, 2021. Senate Bill 2 established a peace officer certification program that has created changes around how officers are certified, reviewed, and decertified. Several members of Post staff sat down to answer questions about this new program. Among the changes is a requirement that all current and future peace officers be certified by Post starting January 1, 2023. This new requirement raises questions for existing peace officers. Foremost among them, what does this new certification mean and how do I get mine? Certification means a couple of things. Uh, first and foremost, what it means is that you've passed the hiring selection standards to be a peace officer in California. And, and that's, not, that's not insignificant. I want everyone to be assured that uh, if they've made it this far, that they've done what they need to do in order to be issued a certification under SB2. A certificate is uh, like a license to a specified profession, something like uh, having a license to be a, a lawyer or a doctor. So you need to have the certificate, either the basic certificate or proof of eligibility, in order to be a peace officer in California. It's important for the officers to understand that POST will work directly with the agencies to obtain their certification. There's no action needed by the individual officer at this time. Senate Bill 2 added hiring and selection standards to Government Code 1029, including additional disqualifiers that prohibit a person from being employed as a peace officer in California. With this new environment of added processes and conditions under which peace officer authority is conferred and maintained, officers are asking, how does this change impact the individual peace officer and an employing law enforcement agency? As a peace officer, the certification being issued to you is a privilege. And as such, you are required to uphold the standards of the profession. Law enforcement agencies will now bear the responsibility of reporting to post complaints, charges, or allegations against peace officers that constitute serious misconduct, pursuant to Penal Code Section 13510.9. What is serious misconduct, and how is it defined? Penal Code Section 13510.8 defines serious misconduct as nine acts, which include dishonesty, abuse of power, physical abuse, sexual assault, demonstrating bias, egregious and repeated acts that violate the law, participation in a law enforcement gang, failure to cooperate with an investigation into misconduct, and failure to intercede. Review of allegations and investigations into these nine acts of misconduct requires a fair and uniform process. And this prompts questions regarding the way these reviews and investigations will be conducted. If an officer's case goes forward for formal review, how timely will this process be? Will there be consistency in how each case is handled? What is being done to make sure this process is fair and completed in a timely manner? I think our officers and our agencies have a vested interest in ensuring that uh, if the cases do come up for review, uh, that they're reviewed appropriately. I think peace officers and agencies uh, have the right to expect that uh, any referrals to the post division will be reviewed as quickly as is practical. We all agree that the timeliness is an important aspect of it, but we also have to balance the thoroughness of the investigation as well and make sure those two marry appropriately for everybody involved. Post has been diligent, spent a lot of time looking at how we can come up with some objective measures to review the cases and ensure that cases are consistently being evaluated and consistently being um, forwarded to the board for review. Several commission regulations have been amended and newly written to define the certification and decertification processes. And this will assist in ensuring consistency across review of all cases that, that come in as a result of misconduct. It's certainly going to be a challenge, and, and we're not naive to the challenge that faces us with respect to that. But the people involved uh, in the transition team have been really diligent in developing a process that uh, we feel is defensible and fair and consistent uh, so that there aren't differences in how cases are reviewed and decisions are made. A key ingredient to a fair, uniform process is ensuring that the formal review is done in a highly visible manner. But what will these hearings look like? 
Will a decision to revoke an officer's certification be made available to the public? And if an officer surrenders their certification prior to the formal review, will they be subject to the same level of investigation and public transparency? So at any point in the process, an officer may choose to voluntarily surrender their certification, but it's important for them to know and to understand that it is permanent and it acts the same as a revocation. And if there is a decision made regarding decertification, whether that's made by the commission or whether you voluntarily surrender your certificate, the name and the reason for the uh, action taken against the certificate is all publicly available and will be made a public record. Every officer who loses their certification will be listed on a post public facing website with their name and a summary of the misconduct that occurred. If an officer resigns during the internal affairs investigation by their employing agency, that agency is still required to complete the investigation. SB2 created a new advisory body that will be responsible for reviewing cases involving peace officer acts of serious misconduct. The new Peace Officer Standards Accountability Advisory Board is made up of appointees who will meet up in a public forum to deliberate cases of serious misconduct and ultimately make recommendations to the Post Commission regarding decertification. So what you're likely to see uh, during a public hearing, either before the board or the commission, is like any other public hearing. So everything will be agendized. Uh, the officer will be uh, given the opportunity to attend that hearing. The public will be given the opportunity to attend that hearing. Ultimately, if the Post Commission decides decertification, that information is forwarded to the National Decertification Index, uh, where the officer and the reason for the decertification is entered into a national database. So as part of this legislation, Post is mandated to report any officer who loses their certification to the index. And so that responsibility will fall on Post to do that reporting to the index, which includes a summary of the misconduct. When the passing of legislation affects the constant that we operate under, uncertainty is to be expected. Answering the questions regarding changes with clarity and purpose allows for us all to build new viewpoints. I look at the passing of this bill from a positive perspective. The law enforcement profession is extremely honorable, and to be a peace officer in the state of California is definitely a privilege. And I also feel that accountability for peace officers is a, is a huge component in regaining and maintaining public trust uh, across the state of California. I think this is a really important aspect of the professionalism that Post has really uh, pushed for throughout California for the last 60 years. I've had the opportunity to interact with law enforcement professionals from around the world. I am confident that our hiring and selection and training standards are the best anywhere. And I think our officers can trust that. They can trust that if they've been selected to be a peace officer in California, that that means something. It means they have the knowledge, the skills, and the abilities to do the job that we've asked them to do. I think it also means that our communities can trust that if they see an officer in California, that they have been properly selected. This is just one more piece to that. They can have confidence that if they interact with an officer in California, that they have been both selected to the highest standards and held to the highest standards moving forward. So I think it's important that the community understand that California is moving away from not being able to take any action against a peace officer if they commit misconduct to being one of the leaders in the nation for police accountability. To become better informed on where the future of law enforcement in California is headed, visit the Post website. <laughs>